they got varicose veins, the parents have had them too, but ended up with a leg ulcer. Should they be concerned? Should I report these to my GP? And when should they be a concern? So I'm sorry, it's a few different questions all rolled into one. But basically, no, it's a great one. America's veins, will I get a leg ulcer? Well, um, Leanne, I'll start off briefly, but you are far more expert on this than me. So the first thing to point out, if you've got bleeding varicose veins, then you need to get them seen immediately. You, you know, you need to send them to the vascular surgeon straight away. But what really the, the problem we've got is that we don't always know which varicose veins are going to cause complications. So NICE, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, recommends that you should be referred to a vascular service for consideration of treatment if you've got recurrent vascular va varicose veins and you're getting symptoms. So we're talking there about, funnily enough, aching legs, pain, discomfort, swelling, heaviness, itching. Certainly if you've got any lower limb skin changes and that's really important so varicose eczema is you know sort of um dry discolored brownish if you've got pale skin possibly more sort of purplish if you've got darker colored skin but there again we're going to chronic venous insufficiency if you've got any changes in color if you've got dry skin do not wait until you get to the stage of having a leg ulcer speak to your gp if you've got superficial venous thrombosis, so if you've got hard red veins on the surface, um, then speak to your GP, get yourself assessed, because if they think that your varicose veins might be a cause of it, they should certainly be <coughs> referring you. And certainly, I mean, I would hope that people don't wait until they get to the stage of having leg ulcers, because leg ulcers are an indication that things have gone horribly wrong. Leanne, what about you? I would just say, um, don't worry if your dad had varicose veins and a leg ulcer. Only a tiny proportion of patients with varicose veins end up at that evidence of severe disease of having an ulcer. The majority of patients out there have asymptomatic varicose veins. In other words, unsightly veins, but not causing any of the symptoms that Sarah's been saying. If you have visible chunky veins, there can be massive veins on your legs, and they're not giving you tired, achy, swollen, throbby legs. There is yeah. nothing that needs to be done about them. The chance except, of resulting except in leg ulcer is more. Wait and exactly that really will make a big difference. But you're absolutely right. In terms of referral, you're not going to get a referral on the NHS at the moment. But really, regular physical activity, keeping your legs up as much as you can, losing weight if you're overweight, all of those things will make a difference. But you're absolutely right, Leanne. For those patients you're not going to get a referral because I wouldn't be allowed to. If I referred you in and you didn't have any symptoms, they bounced the referral back to me. They wouldn't let me. Well, it's all to do with really risk versus benefit of the intervention. Every intervention that we do as vascular surgeons has a percentage of complication. And all that we're trying to do is to be a benefit. If you've just got unsightly veins, there is no true benefit to your health. If you've got tired and achy legs, then an inflammation our intervention is worth it for the benefit to you there has been some questions venous intervention is available on the nhs majority of venous vascular centers use a minimally invasive um, procedure to be able to do this it is detailed within nice guidance we're aware of um, specific rationalizations which has been made made at an intermediate level within the nhs but please, please speak to your healthcare professional about this. They will know the nuances of their local arrangements. But there's no need to pay private. These interventions are available on the NHS. As Sarah says, it's quite clear in the NICE guidance of when this should be offered to you. And the other point to make, I think, is in compression stockings. As a GP, I'm always very, very wary um, because, of course, if, if I've got a patient whose arteries, the, the big blood vessels that pump blood out from the heart, particularly, for instance, peripheral arterial disease, if they're not working properly, then compression could make things worse. So we always would measure the blood pressure at the ankle. So it's called the ABPI, the ankle brachial plexus index. And that's the best way to pick it up. Um, but it is really important that we do check that out before you get compression stockings. <laughs> 